going into college, I imagined that I was going to be an architect, and my introduction to art classes was really at, at uh, ASU taking pre-architecture classes. After taking the, the pre-architecture curriculum, I decided to go with art, but I uh, decided to, um, to leave ASU and went up to NAU. So uh, I went up to NAU, explored art classes in general, and discovered sculpture. Discovered that I really like sculpture, 3D. Um, and pretty soon into that, I discovered that I liked uh, making big sculpture too. I think that 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 was fulfilling um, that need of mine that I sensed when I uh, thought I was going to go into architecture. Uh, uh, that, that need of mine to work with space on a larger scale and to work at, in a, as a sort of a builder within that space, which is how I have come to approach art and sculpture. It's time. I do have some background in, in construction too, you know, I've had my, my share of, of day jobs over the years and uh, some of them have been in construction. I learned some of, the, uh, some of the administrative aspects of dealing with a construction project, which is important uh, when you're dealing with a public art installation, such as the one I'm, uh, I'm doing right now. Once you leave the studio and you go to the site, it's it's a construction project. It's, it's not so much an art project anymore, so you need to have a sense of, of what to do and, and, uh, and, and all that. You know, I will hire subcontractors and, and, uh, and, uh, and vendors to help produce the project. And in the end, you know, my goal is just to be able to pay myself a fair wage for the time and effort that I've put in to the project. And, you know, you have to be pretty vigilant to, to be able to pull that off. Uh, you know, it's, it's not like I'm, uh, I'm uh, you know, buying a villa in, the, in Italy with, with uh, all the riches that I'm amassing from these public art projects, but um, I'm, I'm, I'm paying myself uh, maybe a fair wage, and some may think, you know, a, a, a low end of what would be a fair wage for all the effort that I put into it. It's not unlike a, a general contractor doing a construction project. A lot of, a lot of the same sort of uh, managerial issues and concerns apply to a project like this. The piece at the Greyhound station, um, it's a bit of a multimedia installation. We have uh, two 40-foot long uh, con cast concrete benches that we are treating, uh, doing a, a tile mosaic work as well as uh, colored stain on them. Uh, you know, so there's vendors involved with, with that, the materials, significant investment in, in the, the materials for the mosaic work had a three three man crew doing the the mosaic work simultaneously i hired uh, some laborers to dig out uh, for the foundations there's two not one but two separate foundations that had to be excavated and uh, and poured so you've got uh, you know you got laborers on site for a few days jack everything from jackhammering to ex excavating by hand and then there's a concrete guy got to get the concrete guy in there to form and pour the concrete you know we're still not even out of the ground yet i've hired welders as assistant in the shop as well as on site during the during the installation um crane operators there's 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 still uh uh, electrician for for hooking up the the light box, um, painting help, painting vendors, um, so on. Fencing, you know, the, every every detail of a construction site needs to be needs to be looked into. During the uh, grouting of the tile work, 
we had some pretty good weather early on, but the weather turned cold, and so I had to build a tent over the bench and put space heaters in it so that uh, it wouldn't uh, freeze at night. You can't, you can't put grout uh, on and, and then have it freeze. It needs to be protected from freezing for, you know, two or three days. So that's one of those kind of things when you, when you leave the studio and you go out on site, y you have to just kind of be ready for everything. And, um, you know, chances are you haven't thought of everything. You know, I didn't imagine that that would be part of the process, but uh, as worried as I was how that would work out, it seemed fine. I, went, I would go by in the morning and open that thing up and it was noticeably warmer in there. So I was, I was pleased that that, that that worked, but I was also worried that, uh, I don't know, someone's gonna come along and steal the space heaters and then I'll be sunk or something, but <laughs> that, worked, that worked out fine. <laughs> As far as interaction with uh, the public during installation, you know, you you get the whole you get the whole range as as is as fair game when you're in public art. You get people that uh, think it's great that what you're doing. There are people that wonder why in the hell you're doing that, or why is the city doing that, or this and that. You know, one of the uh, one of the locals came by and made a big crack about noise pollution. You know, you, you just you just try to put a positive spin on what you're doing and and uh, and what it can add to the community. And um, I think the toughest customer, the toughest toughest audience that I had was up at the Denver skate park. I had an installation there, and I was on site for for four weeks from from jackhammering a uh, concrete slab to, to digging out for the foundations to the final installation and, and, and final finish on the, on the piece. The skate park is an interesting cross-section of, uh, of, of teenagers and, and uh, um, you know, many of them are irreverent and, and so there were some challenges in, in sort of pushing into their space and doing what I needed to do and what they are very territorial about. Well, we're setting the major sculptural elements of the installation, as you can see. The, the complete installation includes the benches, the tile work, and, and the color staining on that. But uh, today we're bringing in the uh, fabricated steel elements, one that sort of relates to each of the two benches. The city requested that we, we deal with the benches that were on site, and uh, one of the existing shapes on the benches is the serpentine back, seat back of the bench. So they're relating to that, they were also relating to the theme of the piece, which is a, a stop on the Rio Grande. So it, 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 we're trying to create the kind of the feeling of water and flow with the tile work, but also with uh, the serpentines. But those shapes are wave shapes. It could, be, could relate to uh, energy or motion or that sort of thing. And we're also trying to relate to the activities on the site the trains and the buses, the wheels and motions, the stop and go. And so we have the, the curved elements that could, that could echo the wheels and motion. They echo the arches that you see all throughout the site. I mean, you can't count them, there's so many arches. So a segment of a circle is the theme here on the site. We're playing that up uh, in a way that it, uh, it echoes and uh, just kind of celebrates what's going on here on the site both uh, architecturally and also uh, functionally, yeah. The, the, the most fun part of doing public art is probably pretty much the same as the most fun part of doing any piece of art is when it's finished and you can stand back and see the final product and and go, yeah, I like that, that's nice. This is, this is why I do it because there are plenty of times in the process when it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's just work, you know, the, the old uh, description that art and m many other things as well, I perha perhaps are 95% perspiration and 5% inspiration. And so um, there are times in the process, like uh, maybe when uh, the crane is swinging one final element into into place during the installation. Two, three. That you finally see come to fruition what your vision was. And then uh, 
when all the finishing touches are complete, it's, you know, it's, it's a very gratifying experience.